Hi, this is Brian Kim, and I'd like to share with you my pearls on using the Chopper SD manipulator. And so, I, I believe using the FACO tip to grab and roam around within the capsular bag is really unsafe because you can snag the iris and the posterior or anterior capsule. The FACO tip only can function as a grabber by using either FACO or aspiration and vacuum. And this is uncontrolled because you might remove something that you don't want, you might grab something you don't want to. The chopper, on the other hand, does not have any of those issues, and you can freely go close to the iris, the posterior, anterior capsule, without fear that you're going to damage anything. And so I believe it's a much more controlled uh, way of doing things, and I think it's just a good surgical principle to abide by. I like to keep the FACO tip in the central safe zone as much as possible, and I'd like to just keep it as a stationary object. And sometimes, you know, when you're doing uh, lens manipulation, you have soft lens that have very sticky epinucleus, and so it's difficult to, um, um, to mobilize the endonucleus. And so I'm going to show you some examples here of that, and then I will follow that with examples of mobilizing epinucleus. So in these cases, I will show you that uh, I think there's sti sticky epinucleus that's pro pro um, that's just preventing the endonucleus from coming out. So I did my cross chop. I'm trying to grab that quadrant there. It's not really working for me. And so I go all the way out and around using my chopper out to the equator and I'm pulling the fragment centrally into the central safe zone and then I emulsify. And so the principal movement of immobilizing endonucleus is to go out to the equator and pulling that fragment centrally and so I, I can then attack the fragment with the phaco tip and emulsify it. Again another example just taking that chopper around the equator around the lens and just pulling it centrally. I like to use the, chop, the, the chopper also just to rotate the pieces in front of me. This is another example after cross chop I'm having difficulty again freeing this lens rather than pushing more phaco and aspiration which is the tendency and the danger I just use the chopper to go around the equator and pull this, the, the fragment centrally. Here uh, you see that that didn't really work very well so I'm going to rotate it again and then just go back and do it again so just don't give up if you have difficulty just go back and retry the same maneuver and the piece should come fairly easily. You see I was just attempt, tempted there to try to grab that fragment with the phaco tip and I decided not to. I used my chopper instead and that was a wise decision because I was able to pull it centrally without difficulty and the rest of it came out fairly easily. So again after cross chop I'm trying to grab that first quadrant. It's kind of stuck. It won't come forward. I used the chopper to pull the fragment centrally you know, some chopping surgeons like to really aggressively crack the pieces. I really think that that's not necessary. As long as you do this maneuver, you will pretty, be pretty confident that you'll be able to mobilize that first f quadrant. So again, I have difficulty after cross-chopped uh, freeing that first piece. So then I went ahead and uh, actually tried chopping again, and the uh, fragment became mobile after that. And so don't be afraid to re-chop if you find yourself in a situation where you have some difficulty mobilizing. So again, I have after cross-chop, I'm trying to grab that first quadrant. It won't come out. So I just pull it centrally without difficulty. People have talked about this jigsaw puzzle effect where that first piece is difficult to remove. Cracking and cracking and cracking, I don't believe is efficient. It just stirs more uh, debris up, making, making it more difficult to see. If you just pull that first quadrant out with the chopper like I've shown, it's much easier. Here you saw I was able, having some difficulty grabbing that one quadrant, so I just picked a different area and then re-chopped. And so if you really find yourself frustrated, you don't have to perseverate, just pick a different place. This is an example of a mobile fragment that's really difficult to to reach with the phaco tip and so I just used a chopper to just tease it in front of me and I was able to emulsify easily. I didn't have to torque my hand and try to 
grab that piece with a finger tip, which I think is a bad idea. So these examples are um, removing endonuclease, uh, excuse me, epinucleus in a safe way. Here I'm using the chopper to go under the intercapsule and above the epinucleus and teasing that centrally. And as I do that, you see I'm, I'm lifting it and being able to grab the edge with the phaco tip. And as you mobilize it, it also causes fluid to bi dissect between the epinucleus and the posterior capsule and it's able to be removed easily. This is a pretty thick epinucleus shell. As I grab it with the phaco tip, I get my chopper and I get around it so that I'm creating some space between the epinucleus and posterior capsule. And as I do so, it causes fluid to help mobilize that epinucleus easily. This is a much thinner piece of epinucleus, but the principles are the same. I'm gonna go underneath, and then I rotate my hand, and I find that edge that I'm lifting up the epinucleus, and as I do that, that helps me remove the epinucleus easy with the phaco tip. So again, I'm using the chopper to lift the edge of the epinucleus so it comes out. And you see how I always rotate my hand to make sure that that chopper tip is parallel to the epinucleus and the anterior capsule. You always have to make sure you're, you're parallel to that and then rotate. So you saw I did the same maneuver, mobilizing that uh, hemi-epinucleus. Uh, Again, I'm going to go around. This is one large piece of epinucleus. I'm making sure I'm parallel as I go out and then I rotate. So then I can pull that epinucleus centrally. And don't give up. If you have some difficulty, just keep, keep at it. And as you tease a, a, an edge of that epinucleus, when you grab it with a finger tip, the rest of it starts cascading out very easily. Do the same maneuver. Again, making sure you're parallel as you come out. So again, I'm showing you that using the chopper as the main instrument for manipulation is safer. Please don't do that with the phaco tip. Keep the phaco tip in the central safe zone and let the chopper feed the tip.